I do want to go back and sort of cover some of the ground that we've skipped over, which is you started out as a teen writer and then as and a correspondent, and you were in the teen version of, of 60 Minutes. You then went on to be employee number one at Telemundo. Tell us about your, your time at Telemundo, and then how did you go from there? We know that the, that the station was sold, right? You mentioned that. But how did you go from there to run to Telemundo? Exactly. Okay, there was an there was an in between blip. So going back to that five year period where I wasn't making money, I finally and I didn't figure it out. One of my girlfriends, Concepcion Lara, who was working at HBO, says to me, Nelly, I was trying. I, I since I ran the station and I sold the station, I realized there was not enough programming for the station. So I thought I'm going to do Latino programming, but it wasn't. There wasn't enough distribution. I didn't understand the correlation between distribution and content, yet. And this girlfriend of mine who was an employee at HBO, sometimes you have to have a mole inside a company. She said to me, Nelly, I think these companies, HBO is so hot in America, why don't you hit them up to launch HBO in Latin America? And I was like, is that a business? And I went to them, and at first they were like, no, we're not doing that. But a couple of months later, they called me and they go, you know what? Do you speak Spanish? And I'm like, yeah. And they go, we want to launch HBO in Latin America. And I'm like, I know how to do this. I know how to run a little TV station. So that was my first contract that I got five years later, right? And from there, ESPN calls me. They go, we heard you're launching HBO in Spanish. We want to launch ESPN in Spanish. And the, the guy who was running ESPN, who was employee three of ESPN, my dear friend, uh, Bernard Stewart, who was African-American employee three, I said to him, Bernard, I'd love to do this, but I know nothing about sports. And he goes, I didn't hear that. This is a $5 million deal. You are going to go home. I'm going, you speak many languages. I'm giving you a tutor, and you're going to learn to speak sports. And I, I, I basically went home and studied for a month. Every single, literally, I hate sports, and I had to learn sports. Now, now I like it more, obviously. And I launched two, three channels in Latin America in sports. And then I got a big call from a man named Rupert Murdoch, who nobody knew who the hell he was, including me. And uh, I came to see him in LA, that's why I moved to LA. And he said to me, I'm going to buy 20th Century Fox. And before I even buy it, I want to launch nine channels around the world. Do you want to do it? And I went into this business where, and this is good for you guys to hear because I thought of myself as a creative, but I had to launch and run a real business with a lot of employees, with all of that, and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So the first thing I had to do is ask for money and raise money. And what I did is I pretended that I was my old Jewish boss. And I go, what would he do? Because I go, if I'm the Latina immigrant from New Jersey, is not gonna ask anybody for $5 million. And I would say, what would he say? And he'd be like, I'm stuck, and if you don't give me the money, you're gonna lose out on this deal. So I started pretending I was him. That's why I tell everybody, go to acting school. I told my son, take acting classes, because you're going to have to act. And I would go ask for money like I was him. And it would be like, okay, and i get the money. i go, oh, my God, this, this works. <laughs> oh, my God. So I had, to, I had to ask for money. And then I always was very good at math, but I hated math. And I had to learn how to do accounting. I hired a tutor. And I started every day. Like someone learns a language, I was learning finance. Because I had not been, I, you know what, the part that I didn't say is that I dropped out of college to do all these crazy jobs. And that's why I had to go back to school. And I tell my son every day, you have to learn the back of the house. You know, you can be in the most creative, beautiful field. Everybody thinks that if you're in TV or film, it's so beautiful, you're making movies. You really are doing a lot of legal deals, a lot of legal, you better love law. You're doing a lot of cutting, cutting and pasting so you don't pay for the lawyer $1,000 an hour. You have to do most of the work. And then you have to love finance and accounting. Because let, let's be really clear, whether you do real estate, whether you're running a Burger King, or whether you're doing a TV show, you have to be profitable. So if you don't have a budget, and you don't have actuals, and you're not checking the actuals all the time, and you're not profitable, you don't have a business. So whether you like it or not, all the things you tried to avoid in college and you didn't want to take those classes, you're going to have to learn it and you're going to have to love it. And you do love it. 